Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Claire Jones here from Your One Life Healthy Weight Solutions, and I'm here with you for episode 39 of Monday Morning Matters. Now, as some of you may already know, we've had a theme for this month, which has been all about how do we, um, how, how weight, how managing our weight is like managing our money and what we can learn um, about how to manage them both better. So the first week I went through a number of tips that were all about managing money and how we might be able to translate them to managing our weight. And then last week I went through a little bit about how to perhaps be a bit more objective about the decisions that we're, we're making in relation to, um, to both weight and money. And today I'm really excited because I'm joined by one of my former clients, Jane Kelly, who um, she's actually been one of my poster girls um, for for her before and afters because she's she's done such an incredible transformation. And we first start, well, we first sort of came across each other, didn't we, Jane, in, in sort of 2020. And and then you did my um, my preparing for successful weight loss program. And we also did a bit of one to one work as well. And you've had amazing um, success and not only that you not only have you um you know lost the weight but obviously you've you've kept it off and so what I'm going to be um asking Jane to tell us a little bit about in a moment is about how she has managed her energy budget so just as I said last week and the week before that you know we don't have an unlimited amount of energy that we can consume without putting on weight so we need to have a bit of an understanding of how much we can eat to maintain our weight and also how much we can eat if we want to try and lose it because obviously we have to bring be bringing in less energy than we need in order to be able to create that deficit now there are many many ways of um, managing that energy budget obviously the most obvious one that we hear about a lot is counting calories which you know I do encourage people to do even if only for a short while just to raise awareness of how much energy we're actually taking in but it's not necessary for everybody and when you actually find that um, that balance for yourself, um, it can become much, much easier. So I'm going to hand over to Jane to perhaps just um, tell you a little bit about her experience of how she managed to lose her weight. What were the really important things that she did that um, brought her success? So over to you, Jane. Thank you. And thanks for having me on your show. And thanks for letting me be your poster girl. <laughs> oh, thanks for letting me. Be you, you, you as your post to go. Yeah, so hi everybody. I think from my own personal experience, the key factors for me is, and it links in really nicely with the energy, I called it bartering. So same, same difference. Um, and what I what what obviously I've got the incredible toolkit from Claire, which I think has just been what's held the glue actually moving forward. Um, And also partly was one of my best friends. And I always wondered how on earth she maintained her very slight look. Um, And what I realized is that she could actually out eat me. So if we went out, she'd have everything and cake. And I was like, how do you do it? And it was only when I stayed there for a few days that I realized that naturally slim people do this um, na- you know, naturally because they would eat quite a lot one day, but maybe the next day have a, a lean day. And, you know, with that and sort of, you know, declare your, your bits and pieces made me realize exactly that um it's all about balance so um for me I barter every day um if I'm if I know that I'm going out and having fish and chips because I don't go without here um no I don't do that every day so once in a while I'll have fish and chips um and I would counterbalance that by having a leaner day and certainly a leaner next day and for me the bartering was genius. Yeah, it's like it's being able to make compromises with yourself, isn't it? It's like, you know, if we, you know, there's nothing wrong with socialising, there's nothing wrong with going out and enjoying yourself, but it's knowing that we can't do that and not counter counterbalance it in some way. Otherwise, we will gradually put on weight over time. And indeed, that's what we see happening all of the time, because 
unfortunately, with the world that we live in, in socialising with food is no longer a rarity. <laughs> it's something that um, you know we we tend to do perhaps more often than is than is healthy for us. So so it's about you know perhaps taking that long hard look and think actually do I need to be socialising every single weekend? Do I need to be having takeaways and meals out every single weekend? Because if we do, then it then becomes much more difficult to 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 manage the rest of the time. So you know if we can just look at where we can perhaps make some savings in that both both in terms of money and 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 um eating because obviously you know going out and eating out and takeaways and things obviously that costs money as well as obviously costing us us calories and it's it's about making sure that we're we're doing it enough but not too much isn't it and and that we are being aware of the impact that that's that that's going to have uh, that's that's really helpful to hear Jane thank you and and how did you manage to kind of make sure that you know you were you were keeping a, a healthy diet through through that time what was the sorts of things that, that you were sort of conscious of well I mean a lot of people um always take the mickey out of me because every night <laughs> my meals were a stir fry um <laughs> and you know people say oh what are you having for dinner oh hold on stir fry but for me when I had to introduce the what am I going to eat tonight was when it got complicated. So when I was in what I class as my, you know, complete let's sort this out lifestyle, I was very, um, oh, yeah, uh, um, I got simple. Yeah, I was very it was simple eating. Um, now, I, I would actually add to what you've just said about the takeaways and stuff. I am very lucky. I live in rural southwest France. We don't have Just Eat. We don't have takeaways. We don't have Chinese restaurants or Indian. So I can't sit there and go, you know, I can't be bothered to cook tonight. I'm just going to go on Just Eat. I was actually horrified when I went back to the UK um, that you could even order a cup of coffee from McDonald's to be delivered. Um, let alone the amount of food that's on tap. And that actually um, is, I think, is quite awful. It's awful. it's really bad, the culture. Um, but yeah, going back to the um, question. So I, um, I tended to get into another bit of a habit, again, bartering, where I would maybe have porridge in the morning and I, I don't drink dairy milk. So I would have um, almond, oat or soya and I'd mix it with water so I started getting into little mini habits mm. I drink a herbal tea rather than having um, a cup of tea because the cup of tea was a trigger because in the morning I don't know what it was but the cup of tea had to have sugar in it mm. and I tried all the other natural sugar alternatives and they were so horrific I decided um, just to go with herbal and mm. it actually makes me feel so much better so that, you know, to me, it's mini habits, mini routines throughout the day, more water. Yeah, it's really hard to actually drink water and remember. So that was a habit I had to form. Um, but I would have um, a mixture of um, I eat healthy than I've ever eaten in my life because my stir fries are more like maybe um, a curry because I add every amazing fresh ginger fresh garlic um i have um yeah i've completely forgotten what it's called uh, it's because it's called in a different name here um turmeric turmeric um mm. and i have fresh vegetables and i have a small bit of carbohydrate i'm i'm not a vegetarian but i'm not a huge meat eater so maybe i'd have a bit of chicken a little bit of fish so I try to have the mixture, but I would sometimes go without breakfast because I'm actually not hungry. And that's something that I also found is that I naturally fast. I don't mean to, but I work from home. Whereas before I forced myself to eat breakfast, even though I didn't want it because I had a nine to five. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? And I think the, the thing about fasting is I think, it's all in, we have to take it in in context and if you are not going to do something really strenuous that's going to require a lot of energy and you're not actually hungry 
then you know it's about perhaps you know waiting wait until you are but also just making sure that you know when we're when we're not well you know that that we are obviously yeah. eating eating you know healthily and, and, and when we need to but I think fasting can be um, a really good way of reducing the amount of calories we take in without actually having to change too much else as long as we're feeling fit and well to to do it and we're not about to do something really strenuous because unfortunately that is kind of like Rob, Robin Peter to pay Paul if we start to um, you know do strenuous things on or no fuel um but that's a whole other other topic um yes, home. so i have a I, I make sure i get up and go for a walk um i don't really have an exercise program that i follow <laughs> um i am more aware of that and i am um doing more now but during my main core weight loss i the only exercise i had was walking up and down my track so i did about a mile a day yeah, and walking is one of the best things we can do to support weight loss because if we try and do too much, it can generate lots of extra hunger, and then we can't stick to the the diet that we've decided to follow. So, um, so yeah, it's about just getting that balance right of, of the activity. Um, thank you. That that's really helpful for you to to share that. And um, and there was something else I think that you you mentioned to me previously about having to switch your your mindset around in terms of unlearning some old old habits. Yeah, so I, um, I've i actually lost significant weight probably three times in my life. So I've lost five stone each time. Um, but because of the way I did it, um, the minute I did and hit my goal weight with swimming clubs, um, I went back to eating normal. And I say normal in a um, sort of a bit of a sarcastic way, but I basically went back to stuff in my face and over a period of doesn't take very long very scary you think you look okay and then all of a sudden one day you go wow what have I done mm -hmm. um and then it's rinse and repeat um and I think for me having the tools in my toolkit where I am um empowered myself um I weigh myself every day um, because that monitors me and it actually stops me because I am human. I have lost weight and I have put weight on. Um, and you, but now because you are glaringly staring at it in your face, I do something about it rather than go in the mirror going, oh yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I can still fit in those jeans just. <laughs> yeah. um, so I had to get out of the mentality of living every day and not starving myself just to get weighed once a week yeah and I think that's you know obviously again you know different accountability methods work for different people but one of the things that that I found worked really well for me and indeed you know this is something I do share as, as a as a possible option is weighing more frequently than once a week because the weekly weigh-in can become a, a focal point of encouraging us to eat in a disordered way because we blow it at the weekend and then think well I'm not getting weighed till Wednesday so that's okay I can just starve myself until then starve all day get weighed in the evening and blow it all on a takeaway on the way home and then fish and chip shop after weighing yeah that's it and and so many people tell me this and you know I certainly did it myself and what I found was that you know by weighing more frequently than than once a week and doing it myself under the same circumstances and taking responsibility for that really helped me to raise my awareness of the connection between my behavior and my weight because waiting until our clothes don't fit unfortunately means that we might have put on potentially up to a stone and that's a much more difficult problem to deal with than maybe just a couple of pounds um so thank you again for for sharing that and as I say you know not everybody gets on with the scales there are many other ways to to monitor our weight as well but I think this whole kind of um taking responsibility for our, ourselves and having that accountability towards ourselves um can be really empowering I, I, I think um so and, and that certainly was was my experience too so thank you and there was one other thing Jane that that we that we spoke about wasn't there about um what was it that kind of kept you going perhaps on those days when you know maybe you, you really wanted to you know go back to eating in your in your old ways what 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 was it that's kind of stopped you from doing that do you think a uh, few things I think um firstly um well, two main factors. One is because I am a goal setting coach and goal success coach. I practice what I preached. So I had a book right here, actually. 
Da-da. And in this book, this is my journey. And um, I not only wrote about how I felt every day, I actually went through quite a bad relationship patch halfway through. Um, so that helped me with that. But um, I set myself mini goals every month, not weekly, but in order to achieve my monthly goals, I had to loosely um, get to my weekly goals. So I set myself a goal to lose three pounds a month. And when I say that to people, they go, well, that's not a lot. And I go, well, actually, it is over time. Because what I found with the ladies that I work with, with goal setting, is they set their goals far too high. So you think that you can do one or two pounds a week. But then what happens is I didn't calorie count. I lived my life because you have to live a life. And the minute you go, well, I'm going to lose half a stone, you get halfway through the month and you go, oh, OK, that's six pounds to lose. And then you people give up. So for me, I, I set about three pounds a month. But that's how I lost four. It was quick fix but that's because I had a life still but that that kept me going that was one thing and the other thing is every day I uh, worked with my vision so one of my visions was that I had to do things like this <laughs> on zoom mm. I had to have pictures taken because I was turning um, back into my teaching business world and becoming a coach and in order to be out there I had to do lives, Zooms, and have my picture taken, which is something that I avoided. Um, and I, I put mood boards of all the clothes that I wanted to wear. And as I lost weight, I looked in my wardrobe to see what I had because I refused to buy any more clothes. Um, and for me, one of the biggest things was the reasons why. If you don't have a big enough reason why, then you have no fighting chance and one of my whys was um I had quite a lot of health whys <laughs> but one was quite a visual why and that was me walking into my friend's garden party wearing a very slim fitting top and denim shorts mm -hmm. and I held that vision um, because the party said that I went to the year before I sat there and sweated like a pig. And I don't mean to be rude when I say that this is how I felt, of course, because none of the clothes that I was trying to wear looked nice and I felt awful. So I ended up wearing black jeans and a black T-shirt, big baggy thing, because that's all I could find. And it was 40 that day. Oh. And I swore that I would never do that again. So when I walked wearing that outfit to the, my friend's party, that feeling was amazing. But I, I, I held them visions and going in to have into a um, clothes shop mm -hmm. and not wanting to cry and being able to put anything on and looking OK. That's what I held. Yeah, and that's it, isn't it? And this is something that I, I talk about very regularly is, is the importance of really having a clear vision of what we want to achieve, whether that's, you know, next week, next month, next year, but it's having something you can hold on to that keeps you focused so that that becomes more important to us than any food that we might eat. Because it's not saying that, you know, weight loss has to be the be all and end all, but it's got to be more important to you than the temptation, because otherwise you're always going to go to the temptation. And it's like, um, if we don't practice that every day, we're not going to remember it when we need to. So by practicing it every day, it becomes more more um, stuck there so that you can recall it instantly when when you need it. And of course, setting realistic goals is so, so important. You know, we're setting idealistic ones. We're, we're really setting ourselves up to fail from the beginning. Whereas if we actually look in and thinking, well, yeah, what's what's realistic for me to achieve in the, in the context of my real life, not the perfect life that I hope is going to happen because I'm following a diet, because that just doesn't doesn't happen. And setting ourselves targets that are too too big is very demoralizing because the, the the more time that goes by the harder that goal becomes and like you say we we end up giving up and then we we internalize it and we blame ourselves and we think we're useless and we can't follow something 
But of course, losing weight is one of the most difficult things to do because we're having to fight our biology. We're having to fight all our natural instincts. So we've got to really develop some strong skills to to hold on to, to, to use when, when we need them. Like, like, you know, we wouldn't go into a gym and do six weeks in the gym and expect to walk out with a six pack, you know, people who sculpt their bodies, it takes years to sculpt it, that fully sculpt their bodies. And it's the same with changing our mindset around, around what we need to do to, to be a healthy weight. Um, so what would you say if, if, if there was sort of like one thing that, that, you know, people would say, Jane, what's your sort of you know biggest tip in terms of not just losing the weight but but being able to keep it off because obviously that's the most important thing isn't it it's like it's easy relatively to to lose weight when we're focused for you know periods of time but it's what do you do after that how do you make sure that you keep it off what would you what would you say what would be your advice to people uh think slim Mm -hmm. always think yourself slim Mm -hmm. even if you put on a few pounds um revisit so um what fascinating is um actually look at um who you hang around with because um my partner wasn't a he was a social drinker but he could drink quite a lot and I found that I was getting into the habit where I started drinking and I never drank I was a very bad drinker um in the fact that I had like a tiny bit of wine and that went straight to my head um but I found myself getting into a bit of a habit of liking it more and more because it of course it's addictive um but it's the same principle with anything anything can be addictive um so I stopped I literally stopped and haven't drank a drop for over a year um but that's a personal choice I could have just had the odd one but I thought actually why do I need it um but I think it's to step back and look at what you're doing so I looked at herbal teas um I'm like no that's one sugar don't need it in the morning why don't I just save that for something a bit later on um and cut you know I had I did put on weight you know I put some back on but that was because I got into bad habits started drinking which led to oh packet of crisps goes really nice Whereas before I always had crisps and chocolate every day, but Mm. I was a person that could only have two more teasers and put them away. Whereas a lot of people go, well, I'd eat the packet. Mm. And that's the difference. Mm. So having a bit of everything Mm. and living a life, you have to live and not, um, you know, but you've got to adjust. You have to cut, mine was portion size um, and sneaking in the odd additional extra extra treats rather than a little bit so I still eat ice cream and chocolate and crisps but I have to curb that yeah not buying a packet of crisps at the supermarket and getting in the car with them locking them in the boot yeah it's all these little little tips and tricks that we save ourselves from ourselves don't we so we know we know it's being aware of the our our our, um I don't want to say weaknesses but you know those areas that we we perhaps you know need to pay more attention to and and knowing what can we do to put in our to get in our, our own way to put those barriers in place so that we're we're not sort of vulnerable or, or not so vulnerable so what was it that that you you if you so you mentioned that you you did start to put weight on and you realized what was happening so what did you do at that point when you realized yeah, that well, it was- I stopped drinking alcohol because that's a, a huge um calorie eater and in turn, that triggers other things because you end up hungrier eating rubbish that you wouldn't normally eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and just resetting, mm-hmm. resetting goals, resetting mindset. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Don't crucify yourself, um, but do something about it. And you were able to do that before it got out of hand, weren't you? And you were able to turn things I back around and, and get, get back into, yeah. Because that's the thing about, you know, when we weigh ourselves we we keep that that awareness whereas I, I know from my own personal experience and and you know many clients tell me this as well that you know the, generally the only times we tend to put on weight is when we stop weighing ourselves three days and I, I didn't weigh myself and I forced myself mm. so I knew I knew but you have to look at it and go okay I'm responsible for this it's my responsibility I hold myself fully accountable you've put on weight you've had a great time doing it so like I'll go to England and can you imagine 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, right, tick, tick, tick. However, yeah. I've just found out that I'm gluten intolerant. So that has wiped the floor with some of the amazing things that I used to love. Yeah. And I've had to reinvent again my eating habits. But fortunately, it hasn't affected me that much because yeah. I don't eat the foods. Yeah, and that's it. This is knowing how to fit the meal in a way that is still going to, you're still going to be able to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. You know, it's that getting out with that all of an all or nothing mentality, isn't it? If I want so, to cake, then I'll just have a smaller dinner. Absolutely. And it's, 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 have cake. No, I'm joking. You have to maintain a healthy. <laughs> you skip straight to dessert. What's the problem here? Yeah. Well, you know once in a blue moon as long as you're not eating like that all the time it's, it doesn't matter isn't it it's just, it's just you know, getting that balance life, you know. it? it's having yeah. a life having but a I go to exactly. parties now and can't eat anything so I have to take my own food mm, yeah but even it's like remembering that yeah it's nice to enjoy a buffet at a party yeah. but it's not nice to get overstuffed on a buffet at a party and then feel terrible physically and mentally after isn't it you know knowing how you want to feel versus how you no, you and could do it, isn't it? Mm. The key is is to um, remember that you you don't have to feel like that and the consequences, but also have a good time. Mm. But um, I was going to say something; it's just completely gone. Um, to the point where you barter mm. and you can have a heavy day, but have a light day the next day. That's it. Yeah. Balance. it's about balance and, and it becomes easier to do that the more we practice it and that's that's the, thing. Oh, that's the point I was going to say now it's just an automatic natural habit because I've done it for so long I don't sit and crave my body's got used to it I don't add any sugar to anything unless I'm making a cake and and I'm guessing you'll enjoy that cake when you've made it as well Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with, with me, Jane. And it's been absolutely wonderful to, to witness your journey and be, be part of it and be, be you know feel very privileged to have been able to support you in it. Um, so before we finish, um, I did want to just um, say to everybody, obviously, Jane, one of the things that um, Jane helped me with was getting getting in the habit of blog writing way back when I first started like what's a blog why would I want to write a blog and anyway I now write um I try to be regular about my, my blog writing Jane's actually got a, a a challenge going this week I think haven't you on writing blogs and you've also got something around um websites as well so do you want to just tell people in case there's anyone here watching that you know might be interested and might want to join in yeah great um so yeah so as I said part of the reason for my weight loss is because I had to do um I'm an online trainer and um one of the a couple of things that I my love is my techie nerd side so one is that I love helping mostly women in business so their own business but doesn't you know obviously if they might have a where they might be the nine to five and they might want to start a business. So it's all about women that want to sort of start or grow an online business. So what I've got coming up later today is a series of um, how to write content for your website. So that's obviously geared up for people that are interested in doing that. And then next Monday, I've got how to build and grow a, word, uh, a website. So a couple of things, so I can stick the links in. Yeah, please do, please do. We'll, we'll um, after we've finished, I'll obviously um, yeah, yeah, the video and everything. And yeah, please feel free to the, yeah, drop I'll the links in the comments. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Jane. It's lovely to see you again. Lovely yeah. to catch up and um, being part of my journey. Oh, no, it's very exciting, very exciting. And um, we'll catch up with you soon. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thanks for any questions, happy to answer. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Please, to anyone who's got any questions for Jane, do just drop them in the comments and um, and obviously Jane or I, you know, will answer accordingly. Um, yeah. Very much. Take care. Thanks for joining, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.